Hi, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance, and today we're going to talk about something for prepping, and that is archery. Now, I don't have a traditional bow with me. I'll make that video later. Right now, what I brought today was just a compound bow. This is an older one. Uh, a lot of you guys out there will probably see this, and this is dating me right here as far as my age and so on and what I've used through my life. Um, and this is a very different type of bow than what exists today, obviously. I mean, it's still a compound. It doesn't have the solo cam. It has dual radical cams. But that's not what we came to talk about. Um, archery for prepping is something that I think is, uh, is just something that goes without saying. You should have archery in your inventory for prepping or survival. Uh, traditional archery is completely sustainable. If you have a longbow or a recurve, you can make your own arrows. Indians have been doing it for, for many thousands of years. Um, now, unfortunately, you can't make your own arrows for these things. However, they do have some distinct advantages. One, they are faster, they're more accurate, they shoot a much greater distance uh, than most traditional archery. Um, and these days, you can get into decent compound bows for not a lot of money. One of my favorite cartoon illustrations from when I was a kid was a picture of a uh, Native American, an Indian, coming in, hanging up a compound above his fireplace. And it said, what if? As a statement of what if they had been armed with compound bows. Well, to be honest, had they been armed with compound bows, the West would have taken about 20 years longer to tame. Um, compound bows are lethal. The other thing we're going to talk about are crossbows. We'll get to that in just a second. But your compound bow, it's very quiet. If you're not into deer hunting and things like that with archery, you should get into it, especially before you're actually in an emergency. But for prepping, it comes with ammunition that's retrievable. You know, it's not a fire once like a bullet. You can fire it multiple times. And good carbon arrows like these, you can reuse them many, many times. And you can repair the fletching and the knocks and everything else. You can use them for target practice and then put a broadhead on it instead of a field point. And so to me, that's just an invaluable thing. Now, maybe you're a person who really can't get into the bow, you know, a traditional type bow, and you just don't think you're going to get anywhere. Well, don't lose hope. I mean, for me, I hunted with a compound bow for four years before I actually killed a large animal. Then after that, it got surprisingly easier. Uh, but like I said, retrievable ammunition. But if you can't get into one of these for whatever reason, Crossbows are one of the next best things. This one, and some guys are going to see it and say, oh, it's a Barnett, that's a piece of crap, this, that, and the other thing. I really don't care. Leave the comments about Barnett. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I've been using this one for several years and have had no problems with it. I've owned some Barnett stuff that was just perfect, and I've owned some that was absolute crap. This happens to be one that I think is pretty good. Um, but I've also owned Martin and many other bows and crossbows. Uh, some that were really, really good and some by the same company that were crap. So leave all the Barnett comments you want. I don't care. Um, but if you're used to a rifle, well, this is going to be about as close to that as you're going to get in archery. Um, you know, it shoulders just like a rifle. There's an electronic sight. And so you know, this, this really is. You're going to carry it locked and loaded, uh, arrow in it, safety is going to be on, and all you're going to have to do to fire is just click the safety off and pull the trigger. And for most people, that's a very easy adjustment. We're going to go ahead and shoot these in just a second. We'll be right back. For those of you who don't have a lot of experience with archery, compounds are adjustable. So if it's an 80-pound bow or a 60-pound bow, it's, it's not just a 60 or 80 pound bow. Uh, by cranking the limbs up or down, you can reduce the poundage or increase the poundage. And this one right now set at about 60. It's an 80 pound bow. Um, most compounds, uh, well all compounds, have a let off, which means once you get them past a certain point, the cams roll over, 
and say 60 or 70 percent of the weight is let off the string so that you don't feel that so you're not holding a 90 pound draw weight all you know the entire time so that it's easier for you to sight with the bow and shoot uh, me I shoot instinctively um, this bow particular bow has a 70 percent let off so I'm only holding 30 percent of the weight at the end um, we'll go ahead and just take a shot real quick Now, I don't care what I hit. That wasn't my, my intent. It was just to show that you pull the bow. There's a good deal of let off. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it again, and you'll see the point at which the cams roll over, and it lets off the weight. Right there. Right there's the let off. Anyway, some people, especially females and so on, have trouble pulling a lot of weight, getting the bow started. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of guys do. Um, it's actually a different muscle group than what you're used to using. So I've seen big guys have problems pulling a compound bow the first time. Uh, and after they shoot more and more and get used to pulling it, uh, those muscles get used to being activated, it becomes easier. So don't give up on the bow if it's a little hard for you. And like I said, we're going to do a traditional archery video before too long. But for prepping and survival, like I said, that ammunition is retrievable. I can kill a large game animal, I can kill it quietly and not attract attention with this bow. I can retrieve my ammunition and use it again. I can keep my skills honed and target practice with it, never waste any ammunition. And I'm quiet, so I can do that even just to entertain myself when I'm in a bad situation if, uh, if all hell's broken loose, you know, and we're without the rule of law. So the archery is something that you really need to think about if you're prepping or doing survival. Now next we're going to talk about the crossbow, but also something that I forgot to mention when I was talking about just the regular bow, is the crossbow or the compound or the traditional archery. Uh, I told you that you know you can take large or small game with them and that's true, but you can also use them to defend yourself. I wouldn't suggest it, but in a bad circumstance, if you had to eliminate an enemy quietly, well, the bow is the original silencer and so that's something to consider uh, if you're in an encampment somewhere where you're trying to stay hidden you're not trying to draw attention to yourself and you don't have a suppressor and you don't feel comfortable with using a knife a bow would uh, would do a lot for you and it'll do it at great distance and it will kill reliably so will the comp or the crossbow and crossbows again they're heavy they're much heavier than they look and they have a much heavier draw weight. This particular one is a 300 pound draw weight. So you have to put your foot down here, grab on with both hands. For God's sake, do not let go halfway through trying to cock this. Pull it all the way till you hear both clicks. The safety is now on and it's ready to go. One of the other things with a weapon like this, don't get your thumbs up here. It will not tear your thumb up. It will cut it off. The bowstring coming forward will slash your thumb completely off. They make these so that you're down here for a reason. Stay down there. But for the people who are more used to a rifle, and I mean, you can carry this around. I'm holding no weight right now. <laughs> so I could go on a hunt through the entire day with the bow set just like this. Weapon ready, ammunition locked, and when I see an animal, all I have to do is remove the safety and squeeze the trigger. So this will be very familiar to people who are used to firearms. Now, that didn't miss, as you can tell. It hit the target. You heard it. And it probably passed nearly completely through. So let's go take a look. There's our arrow, good penetration. Crossbows are noisier. You can hear the limbs and the string thwack. 
a whole lot more than you can with a regular bow. And I've heard some people say, well, you know, that'll scare game off. Well, the, the fact of the matter is, is that this moves at over 300 feet per second, 350, some of them move at 400, much faster than a bow. The truth of the matter is, is that the crossbow, the arrow or bolt, is actually connected with the target about the time they hear it. So jumping a string like you get uh, in deer hunting with a, with a regular bow doesn't usually happen. But we'll go back here, we'll shoot a little more, and we'll talk a little bit more about these. Okay, Bob. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. Go get it. Where were you crazy? Where were you crazy? One of the things about archery is it's never really too young to start. They make a lot of children's bows that are very small, and you can get your little guys involved in archery. It can even become a family sport with the misses and your children and you. And the younger they start, the better they're going to be with the archery, just like with anything else, uh, guns, archery, you name it. But with the archery, it's exceptionally easy. And the kids tend to like it, and by the time they're teenagers, they're pretty good shots with the bow, and they'll be pretty effective hunters. So it's something else to consider. Most crossbows uh, and bows and arrows, um, you know, they're, they're very safe items. They're easy to operate, and they're not really that expensive anymore. Um, you know, you can buy a good bow. You can buy a bad bow. The truth of the matter is you usually get what you pay for. Um, you know, quality usually costs. Um, this Barnett was about 300 bucks. Um, that bow over there, I bought it an insanely long time ago. Uh, I won't even bother to tell you how long ago. What I paid for it back then was a couple of hundred bucks, uh, which was pricey back then. Today it's really not. Uh, but for somewhere in the 250 to say $400 range, you can get a very, very nice compound. Uh, you do need to, if you're going to get a compound bow, go to an archery shop to get it. Have them measure you and figure out what your draw length is for a compound bow. Don't just buy a used bow and assume that it's good enough because it's not. You really do actually need to have arrows that are cut to length for your bow and you really actually need to have a bow that is set up for you for your draw length. Um, now with these crossbows, you just have to make sure that you buy the right weight uh, of projectile uh, and length. Uh, these are 20 inch bolts and they work great, they fly fast, um, and this, like I said, it's just like a gun. Um, it really is, it's just a single shot. Um, and they do make cocking mechanisms for these if you can't pull the 250 or 300 pounds that the compound, or that the uh, crossbow is set up for. I don't have any of those with me and I don't per personally use them, but you can look them up online. Uh, there's a lot of cocking devices made for these and you can even buy crossbows there. Some of them are very expensive, but they have CO2 cocking mechanisms built into them. So you literally just push a button and a, uh, a piston powered by CO2 will do the cocking for you. Um, but it's just worth consideration. Uh, it's a valuable item, uh, either this or a bow, for survival and prepping. You may not be able to carry this and your firearm and everything else like that at the same time, but maybe you have a bug out location. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to put one of these or a compound bow in that bug out location so that you can reliably hunt with it uh, for small and large game and provide yourself with, uh, with food. Also, uh, if you put a night scope on this and you were messing around at night and you need it to defend your perimeter, so to speak, from people who don't know that you're there, um, this thing with a night scope on it at night would be, a, it would be the Grim Reaper. Um, it would uh, it would be a silent death that nobody would ever hear. So anyway, I'm Mike from the School of Self Reliance. That's my thoughts on archery, at least this type of archery. We'll do a traditional archery video later. And if you like what we do, like us on Facebook, watch our videos, share our videos. Thanks for watching.
archery for prepping is something that I think is, uh, is just something that goes without saying. You should have archery in your inventory for prepping or survival. Uh, traditional archery is completely sustainable. If you have a longbow or a recurve, you can make your own arrows. Indians have been doing it for, for many thousands of years. Um, now, unfortunately, you can't make your own arrows for these things. However, they do have some distinct advantages. One, they are faster, they're more accurate, they shoot a much greater distance uh, than most traditional archery. Um, and these days, you can get into decent compound bows for not a lot of money. One of my favorite cartoon illustrations from when I was a kid was a picture of a uh, Native American, an Indian, coming in, hanging up a compound above his fireplace. And it said, what if? As a statement of what if they had been armed with compound bows. Well, to be honest, had they been armed with compound bows, the West would have taken about 20 years longer to tame. Um, compound bows are lethal. The other thing we're going to talk about. School of Self-Reliance and today we're going to talk about something for prepping and that is archery. Now I don't have a traditional bow with me I'll make that video later. Right now what I brought today was just a compound bow this is an older one uh, a lot of you guys out there will probably see this and this is dating me right here as far as my age and so on and what I've used through my life um, and this is a very different type of bow than what exists today, obviously. I mean, it's still a compound. It doesn't have the solo cam. It has dual radical cams. But that's not what we came to talk about. Um, this one, and some guys are going to see it and say, oh, it's a Barnett. That's a piece of crap, this, that, and the other thing. I really don't care. Leave the comments about Barnett. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I've been using this one for several years and have had no problems with it. I've owned some Barnett stuff that was just perfect, and I've owned some that was absolute crap. This happens to be one that I think is pretty good. Um, but I've also owned Martin and many other boats and crossbows, uh, some that were really, really good and some by the same company that were crap. So leave all the Barnett comments you want. I don't care. Um, but if you're used to a rifle, well, this is going to be about as close to that as you're going to get in archery. Um, you know, it's shoulders. Just like a rifle, there's an electronic sight. And so, you know, this this really is. You're going to carry it locked and loaded, uh, arrow in it, safety is going to be on, and all you're going to have to do to fire is just click the safety off and pull the trigger. And for most people, that's a very easy adjustment. We're going to go ahead and shoot these in just a second. We'll be right back. For those of you who don't have a lot of experience, are crossbows. We'll get to that in just a second. But your compound bow, it's very quiet. If you're not into deer hunting and things like that with archery, you should get into it, especially before you're actually in an emergency. But for prepping, it comes with ammunition that's retrievable. You know, it's not a fire once like a bullet. You can fire it multiple times. And good carbon arrows like these you can reuse them many, many times. You can repair the fletching and the knocks and everything else. You can use them for target practice and then put a broadhead on it instead of a field point. And so to me, that's just an invaluable thing. Now, maybe you're a person who really can't get into the bow, you know, a traditional type bow, and you just don't think you're gonna get anywhere. Well, don't lose hope. I mean, for me, I hunted with a compound bow for four years before I actually killed a large animal. Then after that, it got surprisingly easier. Uh, but, like I said, retrievable ammunition. But if you can't get into one of these, for whatever reason, crossbows are one of the next best things. Experience with archery, compounds are adjustable. 
So if it's an 80 pound bow or a 60 pound bow, it's, it's not just a 60 or 80 pound bow. Uh, by cranking the limbs up or down, you can reduce the poundage or increase the poundage. And this one right now set at about 60. It's an 80 pound bow. Um, most compounds, uh, well all compounds, have a let off, which means once you get them past a certain point, the cams roll over and say 60 or 70 percent of the weight is let off the string so that you don't feel that so you're not holding a 90 pound draw weight all you know the entire time so that it's easier for you to sight with the bow and shoot. Uh, me I shoot instinctively. Um, this bow, particular bow, has a 70 percent let off so I'm only holding 30 percent of the weight at the end. Um, we'll go ahead and just take a shot real quick. Now, I don't care what I hit, that wasn't my, my intent, it was just to show that you pull the bow 